Okay, learning to float is our series that we're busy with. Um, and last week was a, was a pretty, um, um, I think it was a tough start uh, for many people because the principle that we, we are speaking about is, is discovering truth. What is truth? Jesus Christ said, I am truth. If you are on my side, you are on the side of truth. If you're not on my side, you are on the enemy's side. And his side wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And he only speaks one language. The enemy does not speak any other lang language except lies. There is no truth in him. Um, and we started off with that, with, with the principle of understanding that I believe um, God's word is truth. I believe God's word is truth for us. Now, I didn't start with the series with the intention that you can go Bible bash people. The intention of it is not that you can go to people and say to them, you know what you're doing, you're a sinner, right? Repent, you know, your lifestyle is terrible. Look at how you're living your life. It's disgusting. This is the word of God, you know, and you hit them over the head with the Bible because you, now suddenly we realize that we've got truth, so we try to convince them that we've got truth. It's not the intention of the message. The intention of the message is for you as a believer. How do we live in a world that currently there are so many different opinions, so many different viewpoints coming forward into our ears, into our eyes, into our eyesight, into our hearing? I mean, Emery and I, we were watching a movie um, on, on fr Friday night with Andrew. We're sitting, so we're going through Netflix. Okay, let's find a, a, a movie. Okay, this is a PG movie. Um, Daddy, what? Go... Daddy? Daddy's home. Right? Will Ferrell. Right? Um, funny guy. PG. Sitting with Anjo. Listen to the three of us sitting in the bed. You know, we're going to watch a movie. PG movie is going to be funny. It's Will Ferrell. Um, and the movie starts, and it is the one cuss word after the next. And I'm thinking, I'm going to read. Now, Emery, let's... If I pick a movie, she says, is it, can the kids watch it? Is it appropriate? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. It's PG. It's going to be good. And suddenly there's, 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 oh my God's everywhere. And there's cuss words and there's swearing and there's, there's um, sexual thoughts. And, everything. and I'm going to myself, where has things changed so dramatically that PG movies are now things that I think was 2 to 18 when we grew up? Now, by we, I mean <laughs> the older people in this congregation, like Tom and, <laughs> and Bill. <laughs> no, like, how, how did things change so much? Where did the truth change regarding saying the following? It's okay to use cuss words in front of kids who might be watching it, whose parents, the only... Um, Guidelines that parents give them is make sure that, that the movie's PG. Sure, Dad. What's not watching this movie on their own? Well, they're watching a PG movie, right? Where did it change? Where did the shift happen so dramatically where what seems to be right before is not right anymore? What was wrong before is right now, and what's right now was wrong before, and, and what used to be right is now wrong. Which is so weird, right? It, it used to be, be right to, to have moral standards. It, it used to be, that used to be a good thing. But things have changed. And, and how do we survive in a world where, I don't know if you know this, but un, unless I think, okay, Christ was supposed to come yesterday, according to some people. <laughs> I only stayed behind for you guys. <laughs> I was on my way, and then I said No. There were other people also, so you might, maybe you didn't make it. But, um, <laughs> but unless he comes, it's not going to start changing just by itself. And you're continually going to be in this world that's going to continue to, and remember what I said last week regarding the enemy. The enemy is not going to twist the truth so radically that you can able to go, ha, that's a lie. That is so clear and blatant a lie. I can identify it from a mile. He's not going to do that. He brings in counterfeit truth. He brings in things and terms. And, and I said, that, um, here's our scripture. And this scripture is so key. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no re revelation, vision, people cast off restraint. When people do not accept divine guidance, they will run wild. 
But whoever obeys the law is joyful. And this is the translation I like. Where there is no understanding of the word of the Lord, the people do whatever they want to. But happy is he who keeps the law. Now he uses two counterfeits to kind of fall in with this scripture. He uses two, two counterfeits. It's uh, fake money that you can't just spot. You, can't, you have to know the difference between the two to identify that this is not real truth. And the first weapon he uses is the word that we, we used last week, relativism. It means that truth is ever-changing. Don't tell me that this is absolute truth. Truth is evolving. It's changing. Um, I, one of the examples I used last week was regarding gender. Um, on birth records, we have, based on birth, male or female. Um, the new law that they are pushing is that they will no longer be male or female on gender birth certificates, but once they turn 12, they can decide which gender they want to be. That's a change in truth. That's a change in how we were created. Um, so, so because it's evolving, people are evolving. They're getting more, you know, we catching up with who we truly are. No, that's absolute nonsense. It's counterfeit. So, so and and the next one is, <laughs> I'm laughing that somebody else was laughing. That is funny though, if you think about it, right? We're evolving. We're getting more sophisticated. Um, okay, subjectivism, tough word to say. All of you try that. Subjectivism. <laughs> it sounds like I had a few to drink. Okay. It's the belief that I, and I've only seen that in movies. Um, <laughs> PG movies that I wasn't allowed to watch. Um, it's the belief that I, the subject, have the right to determine what is right and wrong without submitting my judgment to any authority outside of myself. I can decide what's right and wrong for me. Everybody in this church can decide what's right and wrong for them. It's based on how I feel because there's no absolute truth. You can't impose your beliefs on, on me. Um, I am the source um, of my own truth. I am the, the one that determines what's truth or not. Now, these two very common belief systems have led to a huge shift in virtues. Relativism and subjectivism have led to a shift in, in, in what we value. And, and this shift has caused major core belief changes. Now, if I have to ask you, what is the most common used Bible verse? What do you think is the most popular, most commonly quoted Bible verse in the world? Okay, John 3.16. I, I, I'm going to give you the top 10. Okay, number one, John 3.16. Okay, for God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son, so do you ever believe in him? Will not perish, but will have everlasting? Amen. Amen. Okay, number two. For I know the plans I have for you. Yeah, Jeremiah 20 and 9, 11. Uh, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to hope and a future. This is God's plans for us. Awesome. Good scripture. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who? Amen. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work for good for those who are in? That's a different translation. Well, for those who are in Christ Jesus, who have been called according to his purposes. Psalm 23, 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love will... Um, <laughs> Philippians 4, 6 is, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Another good one. Another, another, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you are able to prove what is a good, perfect, and lasting thing look at. Another good one. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your, all, your own understanding. Okay, these are the most popular scriptures in the church. Like, you show me somebody in the world that's going to, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. <laughs> there you, how did you know that? You were here yesterday when I was preaching it on my own. <laughs> that is the most popular scripture in the world. Judge not, lest you be judged. So, so the core value, now, now when Jesus... Um, 
was here or before Jesus was here, what, what was the, the core uh, value of the earth? It was God is a just God. This is what, what the culture was during Jesus' time, while Jesus was here, a little bit after him, but it shifted. It's moved from God is a just God to judge not lest you be judged. Saying the following, don't you judge me, right? I know my own truth. You know your own truth. I'm not going to judge you. You don't judge me. Another interesting thing, according to, to this world, what is the most common virtue right now? Will you? Shush. <laughs> Somebody escort Greg out, please. No, you're right. Tolerance. Most common virtue today is tolerance. Now, tolerance is not like tolerance when, you know, like you have a mullet, I'll tolerate it. <laughs> it's not the same, right? It's not like tolerance, well, I'm going to, you know, you don't like cats, right? I'll, it's, I'll tolerate your likes and your don't likes. Tolerance have now changed. This is the new definition for tolerance, is that all beliefs, all values, and all lifestyles are equal. All beliefs, all values, and all lifestyles are equal. That is the most common virtue currently in the world. And for some people, and, and this is not to judge you, this is some of us going, yeah, that sounds right. Right? They don't hurt me. I don't hurt them. They don't influence me. I don't influence them. I'm going to go my path. I've got my own thing to do. They go their path. They, you know, whatever, right? Why, why would that bug me? It should bug you because you need to understand that they are missing out on life. I'm not, not I don't care what they're doing wrong. It's about what they are missing out of. It is that passion we should have for people, not because you live differently than me, that you are wrong and I'm right. No, it's buddy. You are missing out on purpose. You're missing out on everything that God has for you. Our heart should not be to judge people for how they live their lives. It should be that we recognize and go, wow, that's so much in that person. Christ is so much more for him. So it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how you live as long as you don't hurt anybody. You can do whatever you want. Don't judge me. I won't judge you. Here's a good scripture to, to back that up. 2 Timothy 4 verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to see their own desires, they'll gather around them a great number of teachers that say what their itching ears want to hear. And that's in the Bible. Like years before this happened. It's amazing. They will turn their ears away from the truth and they, and they, will, and they will start listening to false beliefs. So we seem to think that we are told that tolerance will lead to happiness. And a lot of people say, well, just allow him, let him just live his life because he's going to be happy. That's how he's happy. Just tolerate it. This is how happiness. And here's the thing regarding these two, these two um, desires uh, or these two methods, weapons of the enemy. Subjectivism and relativism is for the purpose so that people can live happy lives. That's why they are there. This is how you're going to find happiness. This is how this world is going to be happy and there's not going to be war. It's because people are going to be, there's going to be subjectivism and there's going to be um, relativism and, and there's no absolute truth and allow them to live their absolute truth because that's really who they are and that's how they're going to be fulfilled and that's how they're going to find happiness. Okay, here are the top 10 um, desires of people in the world. Their quest. Okay, so what are the top 10 desires for people in this world? Number one is what? What you think? I, what, what, Greg, what did you say? Yeah, he's right. <laughs> Greg, we're now on page three. <laughs> Keep tracking. Okay, what's number two? Money. So number one, the number one desire, the number one, 
Do you, do you realize that the number one thing the world is running after is happiness? This is the most common desire, the number one ranked um, desire of people in their lives is they want to be happy. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great desire. I want that also. Number two. Oh, how many of you don't want to be happy? Let me ask you that. Good. Number two, money. Nothing wrong with that. Number three. Nope. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom. Number four, peace. Five, joy. Six, balance. Seven, fulfillment. Eight, confidence. Nine, stability. And ten, passion. Those are the ten, the top ten in order what the world is longing for. Top ten in order. So that shows you that, that the information that people are gathering the things that they are going after, the things that they are pursuing and running after has to do with these things that's on this list. These 10 things will, will make, that's how they're going to make their decisions. That's how, what they believe in. That's the, the values that they have, the virtues. This is what they're going to chase after. And, and they're going to use in their minds whatever they believe regarding truth and whatever they believe regarding purpose and whatever they believe regarding um, what the well not they don't have the word but what the world tells them in instruction those are the things that they are going to follow and track after to get to those things to get to the top 10 so the world is always quick to offer advice ideas formulas theories on how to be happy because let's just target number 1 today Let's just target happiness. It's always quick to give you ideas on this is how you're going to be happy, joy, peace. But we know, we know that true happiness only comes from God. And that is one of those incredible religious answers that I'm going, what? The world's going, what? No, what? What do you mean true happiness is only found in God? How, how can I, how, how do I, like, where is he? Right, I want happiness now. Um, if, who told me that they were watching um, um, Carl Lenz was just talking. He just did a series regarding, you know, people say, uh, you know, I'm in poverty. I need money. And he says, oh, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't need cattle. I need money. <laughs> right? Uh, the joy of the Lord. I'm so depressed. I was just saying, the joy of the Lord. Is I don't need that. I need, I need to get out of depression. Right? How can we need to learn as believers to give answers to a world that have a whole lot of questions and they're pursuing so many things. They're pursuing happiness. And we give them an answer like, oh, true happiness is only found in God. <laughs> and then I find people in the church who have no idea what happiness is, even if it hits them on the forehead with two by four. They didn't know, wow, that was just happiness that just hit me. They don't know what it is. And, and we want to communicate things to this world regarding who God is and His plans and His purposes. But we use terms and, and terminology and we live as we've got no clue what happiness is. I desire happiness in my life. I, I want happiness in every area of my life. And we're going to look at what it means to be happy in a few minutes. But I want a blessed relationship. I, I, I want a fulfilled relationship with God, with my friends, with my family, with my, not in that order, with my wife, she's like way up higher. Um, but I want, I, want a, I want fulfillness. I want to be happy. Like it's nothing wrong with being happy. If somebody tells you God's not interested in your happiness, tell them to shut the front door. <laughs> because it's not truth. It is not true because he keeps on saying, blessed is he. Now, the word blessed means happinesses, if there's an English word like that. It's not just happy, it's plural. Happinesses. Happinesses. 
God's desire for us is to be fulfilled, is to be happy. But how we go about getting it, that's the key. Because we can listen to counterfeit truth in the pursuit of it. Or we can learn that, listen, happiness is not because I've said, oh, it's only in God that you will find true happiness. That's a religious statement that means nothing to people. But when I start living out who God is for me, what God has done for me, when I start living out, walking in a relationship with Him, with how I treat my wife, with how I treat my children, with how I treat my friends, with, with, with what I do with my finances, how I work. Do I work because I've got a boss or do I work because I've been given this purpose? How I, how I live my life, when that becomes visible and people start seeing that happiness is in you, Happiness is not in religion. Happiness is in relationship with Him. To tell people, you know, there's no happiness. You know, God is your, is, what did I say earlier? Um, true happiness comes from God only. That, that's not something that just comes. Okay, you're going to be tr uh, true happy. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And if you're currently in a place where, where you are struggling with, with the happinesses. Yeah, let me read the scripture. Um, the, the scripture is from David, and, and it starts in Psalms 1. Now, Psalm, uh, David, it says, David was a man after God's own heart. Okay, so, so God liked David. Right? Why? Because David was living a life reflecting who God is. Was he perfect? No. Are we perfect? No. Do we have a perfect one living inside of us and that's why we are, are redeemed? Yes. Our desire is to live a life that reflects God in every area of our lives. Now, David was a man after God's own heart. And it says in, in Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in in the seat of the, the scornful. But he delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. So, so this, is, this is David talking. He's writing, saying, um, blessed, happiness is, is the man. And then he gives us three instructions. The first one is tell us um, the man that does not do three things. And then verse 2, 3, and 4, he tells us what the man has to do to stay in the happinesses. If you do verse 1, you're going to leave happinesses. It's very good English. And if you do verse 2, 3, and 4, then happinesses will continue to pursue you. Now, I want you to understand that when I look at the word, and some of you are going, okay, you're back in the Bible again. I want you to understand that when I look at the word, I read the word, I take the word for the purpose of understanding God has given me an instruction on how to live on this earth. Because I am in relationship with Him, I'm not in religion. Because I am in relationship with Him, I used to think when I was in religion, man, it is so boring to be a Christian because there are all these restrictions and limitations that God puts in. His, why can I not have sex before marriage? And all the men thought that, right? Like, why? why? What's wrong with it? God, why? Just doesn't make sense to have no fornication. Why not? I like fornicate. Right? Come on, let's be honest just for a moment. They're like, God, why can't I? Okay, this is more applicable to the ladies. Why can I not gossip? It is fun. I like doing it. I like texting. Did you see what she was wearing? I can't believe she just did that. I like gossip. God, it's fun. Why are you taking away all the fun things in this earth? Why, why can I not stay in offense? I like offense. I like it when I'm offended by people. It's something that I can talk to somebody else about it. It's a good movement towards gossip. <laughs> if you remove offense, then what am I going to be offended and gossip about? God, I, I like being at a place where I'm angry at people. I like walking around, people going, you're so angry. And you go, yeah, I'm angry. You better, I'm going to manipulate you with my anger to do what I want to do. If I can't use anger anymore, if I can't use silent treatment, 
How am I going to get him to do what I want him to do? Or get her? <laughs> All the men, some of them laughed quietly, except she's not here, I know. <laughs> she's teaching preteens. Um, God, I like doing these things. Why are you restricting me? Why can I not use them anymore? And then I got to a place where I was no longer in religion, but I stepped into relationship. And then suddenly, these instructions that he's given me are no longer there to restrict me. It's actually there to show me, Andreas, I love you. I want better things for your life. It's not to hold you back. This is actually to move you forward in relationship. This is so that you can have a clean and pure and beautiful marriage. This is so that you can have integrity in business. This is so that you can be a friend that people can count on. This is so that you can be, when you speak and people are down, they knock on your door because you are the one that speaks words of encouragement and life. You are an uplifter of people. The reason why I'm doing this, and I gave you these restrictions, it's not so that you can, th so that you think I'm trying to hold you back. It's when somebody has created something, the best advice we can do is to, to go to the one that made the body, that made the spirit that's inside the body, and ask him, how do I use this as effectively as possible? How do I get this thing to, to peak performance? To run at high revs without burning out. And not only did he create this body, he actually created the environment that this body is living in. So to go to him and say, okay, so I want your instructions on how to live in this body to be effective. But I also want your instructions to live in this body to be effective in this world that you created. The best advice you can get is from the one who made it. So it's not restrictions for you to say, you can't do this, you can't do it. It's actually for you to live a life to the fullest. It's like me, Andrew trusts me. Kaylee trusts me when I give them instruction. They trust me because they know I love them. I want the best in the world for them. When the fireplace is on, and Lene is now at the place where she, she wants to go, well, she's now... Thankfully, past that place, but around Christmas, she was at the place where she wanted to touch the fire. Right? It wants to go. So, what do I do as a dad? Do I go, um, yeah, you, you can touch that? Or do I go, because I know the consequence of what's going to happen when you reach in there, I'm going to give you guidelines, Lene. Do not touch it, it's going to hurt you. I'm not going to control you. Well, we do control our two-year-olds, one-year-olds. <laughs> but God does not do that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit weird. Do not touch that. I told you not to touch it. But that's kind of how it works with us because God does not pick us up and put us somewhere else. He says, you've got free will and free choice. He's given us instruction. This instruction will cause you to, to have the best life you can possibly live within the purpose I created you for. He's given us the instruction, but he's not controlling you to do it. It's your choice. Now, you have to choose if you believe that the one who created all of it has the best truth for your life or not. You have to decide that his truth is my truth. As believers, we have to decide what he believes or what he's written down as truth. That is what I'm going to make my truth. That's how I'm going to live my life because he knows best okay i don't know if we're going to get into this morning's message <laughs> bible tells us that david was a blessed man okay so 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 here's the thing um the very first word that is used in that in in psalm 1 1 blessed blessed is the man i'm just going to do verse 1 and then i'm going to end it blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So I'm busy going through this, this scripture this week, looking at the progression, the progression of the man. Blessed is the man. Blessed Happinesses is the man. You will remain happy if you do not do what? There are three things, three instructions that he's given us. Three different groups of people that he, that he listed within this, this group. There's, there's 
the, the um, uh, where are they? There's the, the ungodly, the sinners, and the scornful. Now, now what's the ungodly? Um, the ungodly is simply those who are not believers. They are good people. Like we know a lot of them. You know a lot of great people. Good people. I mean, when you move, they're there to help. That's how you identify somebody's good or not. Um, no, good people. I know, Michael, you're helping, helping Patricia today. It's awesome. It's a good man. Good people are people that, that will go and feed people on the street. They'll go work on, on different um, uh, ministries on street corners. They'll help people out. Good people, they will look after your children. They will be kind. They'll feed the hungry. They'll donate to different causes. Um, good people. Morally good, like if you are, I feel safe with my kids going to that house, right? It's good people, good moral values. But good people does not mean they are godly people. You become somebody who is godly when God's spirit enters into your life. Before that, you are simply a good person. And unfortunately, a good person, the word speaks later on, it says they are like chaff that's blown in the wind. It's not Bob Dylan. Right? So, so good people will also have the consequence. Without God, there's consequence for life. So number one was ungodly. Number two is sinners. Now, these are people who actually practice sinful deeds. I don't know if you know any of them. I know a few. Like, you know, sinful deeds. Um, um, on purpose, going after it, looking forward to the weekend just so that they can enter into that or do it, right? Sinners. The second people is scornful. These people are not only ungodly and practicing sinful deeds, but they actually attack Christianity. Three groups of people, ungodly but good, sinners intend to go and sin, scornful, sinning, ungodly, and criticizing you for your systems and your belief systems. So he's saying it's good for us to identify that. Now notice what happens to Christians who tries to find his happiness among unbelievers. He progresses from walking, he's busy walking, to standing, to sitting. Notice what happens. He quits walking with God and he starts walking with the ungodly. It starts with a very little thought, very minor action, but it gets progressively worse. A small, a small word, a small action, a small look, a small desire, um, a, a small thing, but it, because of the environment, it gets progressively worse and worse and worse and worse. Believers who are not in fellowship or people, believers who are out of fellowship with God, start sharing common paths with ungodly people. Then they quit walking and start standing. They start to participate in the sinner's activities. Finally, they begin to criticize the things of God and scorning them. And I have seen this happen. I've seen this happen with people in our body, outside of our body, that might have left this body now, where, where they are so on fire for God, they're on fire with passion for the things of God, they pursue it, they go after it, they, they want the, the principles of God, and then, then somewhere along the line, um, they, they, they step out of relationship with God because they started walking with ungodly, and instead of walking in the principles of God, there's just the slightest, corre oh, not correction, um, deviation, uh, adjustment to their path and they start walking with the unbeliever and and the, the ungodly and then their conversation starts changing and what they're hearing starts changing and what they're believing starts changing and then they get to the place where well that's not really wrong anymore right because I've been so convinced by what I've been hearing that this is not wrong anymore and then you've you've moved so far away from what the word the one who created you has given you the instruction on how to live life to the best and fullest mode. You've moved away from it. And now you're at a place where you're in conversation with people that are saying stuff. And suddenly you start agreeing with them and mocking what you used to believe. There's a progression in this. Blessed is the man who walks not 
in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Does this mean we have to now remove all the people that do not go to church with us from our lives? No, it does not mean that. It means whose counsel are you taking? Who are you listening to? Is the word your authority that's coming from God, from a loving God that wants the best for you? Or is your counsel and your authority the opinions of people and this world? Who do you turn to? But he delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Now, He delights in the law of the Lord. What is the law? God's word. I'm going to finish there because I said I was going to. So, um, We'll continue on with this. Because we have a pursuit for happiness in our lives. Every single one of us want to be happy. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. God wants you to be happy. But whose advice are you taking in your pursuit of it? Now, we have an incredible word that's given us fantastic instructions, and we'll continue to dive into it. Um, I'm going to pray for us. Everybody, please close your eyes. Father God, I want to thank you for this morning. I want to thank you for your word that is loving and kind, and that's the best path-setting direction compass that we can have for our lives. There's nothing that can better direct us into purpose and what you've created us for towards happiness, towards being blessed and fulfilled. Not in things, Lord, but Father, in you. So, so Father God, I pray that you, you will continue to break, an op break open to us where we've listened to the wrong advice, where we've taken this diversion of the path of truth that we think we're going to be happy when. I'm finally going to be happy when. The divorce is through. I'm finally going to be happy when um, my settlement comes in or whatever it might be that you think it's going to. That's not going to cause you happiness. God's instruction is what gives happiness. That is what we need to pursue and correct. Make a path correction in your life towards what the word says. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will identify to every person sitting here where we have altered the path that you have for us to suit our own opinion of what is right and wrong and what is true. Amen. I, I just have to add this one thing. I'm so sorry. It's the last verse. It says, verse 4, The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. So he talks about it saying, Those who are on God, we are planted firmly next to waters. Will continue to feed us. He said, but the ungodly, the, ungod the ungodly, the ungodly, um, is not so. He's like, like chaff that's been blown by the wind. Do you know why the ungodly is like chaff that's been blown by the wind? Because their truth is ever changing. There's nothing consistent that can remain and keep them settled in their lives. You have something that is consistent. Amen. Yes. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday next week.